All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you've settled in. Um, Felipe is going to talk about all the stuff that you guys have done on GitHub. I hope everyone here has done at least something on GitHub. So now he's going to tell you what you've done and why you've done it and why it was wrong because he has the data. So everyone, say hi to Felipe. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Felipe Hoffa. I live in San Francisco. I have jet lag, but I'm pretty happy to be here. We are going to analyze data. We're going to analyze a lot of data on GitHub. Who has a GitHub account? Good, 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 good. So I'm going to measure you now, what you have been doing, what are your favorite projects, and why you should be doing this. Um, if you have any questions, you might want to interrupt me. Don't interrupt me too much. But I'd be very happy to uh, run interactive queries and go wherever you want to go. Um, what do you see here? What is this? Hmm? A license? Code? Um, yes, it's code. Uh, but if you go deeper, you can start seeing other things, like, yeah, it has a license. Uh, and it's doing some imports. There are some modules. There are things from the future. If you, it's Python code. If you go back, you can see, look at the big picture. You can see the number of lines. You can see the number of stars, number of forks, how many people have contributed. Um, so what I want to say here is what I'm looking at here is data. And with a big font because it's big data. We have a lot of data here that we can analyze. So who wants to, anal who wants to analyze GitHub? Um, for example, project maintainers. Who here has a popular project? Everyone has a GitHub account, but who has a popular project? I know some people, yes. So yes, we, as a project maintainer, you might want to know uh, how popular is your project. Who is starring in it? Uh, how to manage change? Uh, how many people would you be breaking if you change your API? Or is your project healthy? Are you closing issues fast enough? Um, if you are a project user, you might want to know the same things but also how to request features, how to be more effective when asking about uh, to, how to get new features. Or what are the projects you should be following? Are there uh, more popular projects? And especially before you become a user, you are a project chooser. You want to choose the, more, the most healthy project. Uh, you want to see if there are more popular projects. If you are looking for a JavaScript library, there are like a thousand of them. But you can use data to choose uh, the one that's closest to your needs. And if you just love data, yep, we have a lot of interesting data here. That's why we keep doing this. That's why Alan is doing Bitcoin. This is why I love doing GitHub. Because we have a lot, lot, lot of interesting data that we can analyze. We are going to look at three main data sets. Um, all of these data sets are stored in BigQuery. Um, the first one is GitHub Archive. This has a log of all the events that are happening on GitHub hour by hour. You can see every row, every event, and start querying it. It's updated hourly. Uh, there is this other data set that it's GHTorrent that looks uh, within the graph. It goes beyond the events and looks at also adds more data of uh, metadata that people have used and annotated GitHub with. And then we also have uh, GitHub's code. Uh, we copied most of the open source projects into BigQuery so you can analyze it and look at it as code, as data. Um, things I've been doing with this, I've been doing a lot of interesting blog posts. My favorite one, in, or one that a lot of people love, is what are the top companies contributing to open source on GitHub? You know what the top companies contributing to open source are? Ah, oh, you read that blog post. <laughs> yes, there was a blog post two years ago that said that Microsoft was the top company contributing to GitHub. But the thing is, when you are analyzing data, there are so many ways to measure things. And no way is absolutely correct. You have to make a lot of assumptions. And I made some assumptions in that case. Uh, that blog post said that Microsoft was the one that was contributing the most users to GitHub. But then you can count in uh, different ways. So for example, 
Here I have it in two dimensions. One is the number of uh, users I identified from each company on GitHub. And you can see that, yes, Microsoft, that's the uh, one on the most on the right that has the most users. But if you look at the dimension of how many repositories people are contributing to, uh, Google is on top. But both companies are there on top and have way more users and way more projects than these other companies that are, st are still pretty cool. But also the size of each circle here uh, is counting the number of stars these projects are getting. So basically we're looking at how much impact, how much people love all of these projects. So even though Microsoft is doing really well, I love how much they've changed in the last few years, I still can say that Google has more projects and more stars. And I love it that, it's, that things are that way. Then you have a lot of other companies there. They're pretty cool. Some I expect more from. Uh, some uh, are doing huge contributions while being small companies. So yeah, these are pretty interesting ways to measure. Still, I had to make assumptions. And one of the main messages of this talk is that I want you to challenge my assumptions. If you think I'm wrong, please tell me. You have access to all of this data. You can go deeper. You can count things in different ways. And we can refine the results I got here. To get to these results, this is the query that I run. It's pretty complicated. It has a lot of assumptions. So for this talk, we sh it's better if we start at a more simple place. Uh, let's go back to 2012, when my teammate, Googler Ilya Grigoric, started collecting all of these events. Um, GitHub has an API. He connected to the API. He started downloading all of the events, and he left these as files on, that you could download. If you want to get one hour of GitHub, archive, of GitHub events, you do a wget. You'll get a file in less than a second, five megabytes of compressed data. If you decompress it, that's like 40 megabytes of data. That's nothing. Uh, anyone can download any of these files and start analyzing them on your computer at any time. But that's only one hour of data. Uh, if you want to analyze seven years of data at this rate, we are talking about two terabytes of data, um, more than a billion rows, and that's way more than we normally handle. If you have to handle one billion events, uh, two terabytes of data, how do you, where do you do this? What's your uh, tool of choice? Any, what would you use? Hmm? OK, that's one answer. Yes. So there are options. Uh, but my option, the one that I'm using, is called BigQuery. That when Ilya started collecting these events in 2012 was one of our uh, new projects at that time, and he put all of the, these files here. Why do we want to use BigQuery? It has some nice um, advantages. One, it's fast. Uh, we will be able to analyze terabytes in seconds. It's simple. You only need to know SQL. It's scalable. You can go from bytes. It doesn't matter how much data you have. It will store all of it. And it's always on. Uh, compared to other solutions, here you have nothing to turn on. It's just always there. You just load your data, as much data as you have, and it will be running always because you don't pay for hours, you don't pay for RAM, you, don't, you just pay for how much data you are storing and how much data you are querying. And everyone gets a free terabyte every month, so if you want to run any of the queries I want, I'm going to run now, uh, you can just open your computer, create an account with Google, you will get a uh, free terabyte, and you will be able to repeat all of this. Even better, uh, BigQuery has, you can share data. Um, you can, when you load data in BigQuery, it's your data, for, it's for your eyes only. You can have data, health data, private data. Uh, it will be stored securely. But if you want to share it with third parties, with any other companies within your company, or with the whole wide world, you can do it. And so Ilya was able to share all of these events with all of you. 
and you get this free terabyte every month to run queries. So that's BigQuery. We'll uh, demo it. To, we'll run some live queries, but let's start looking at the stars. Which stars am I I'm talking about? Hmm? GitHub stars, of course. So what were the projects that got the most number of stars last year? TensorFlow, that's a good guess. Any other guess? What other projects got a lot of stars? Hmm? Uh, Ethereum? Okay, let, let's count it. Let's, let's run this query before we run out of guesses. So I have here the query. I have a simple query. Uh, you can connect Python or whatever your favorite tool to analyze data is to BigQuery, but it also has this web UI. So I have this table from 2017, all of the events from this year. This table is, has one terabyte of data. It has 400 million rows. And if I want to count the number of stars, I can run a count stars of all the watch events. Every time someone starts something, it produces a watch event. And last year we saw 30 million stars. You want to know what are the projects? Repo name, group by the, this is the first column, order by the second one, and in descending order, and give me the top 20. What were the top 20 projects last year? And you can see it's pretty fast to just start writing queries and getting results. And the second project with the most stars was TensorFlow. Good, 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 good guess. The first project was FreeCodeCamp. Anyone here knows FreeCodeCamp? Yeah, so they are a great resource for people that want to learn how to code. And the first step in, this, um, in their program is create a GitHub account. The second step is start our project. <laughs> and that's how you get to the number one spot. Smart. But yeah, they deleted that step, so uh, these 90,000 stars are only from the first half of 2017. And you have Vue.js, Facebook React, uh, what every programmer should know, and a developer roadmap, etc., etc. So that's how we start analyzing GitHub. Now, whenever you run a query, whenever you're looking at data, you have to ask, you have to be a little suspicious. Are these the real results? Can we trust uh, any ranking that tells us these were the top projects last year? Can we? Turns out, um, let me, this is for Asia, so you might know. Anyone here is a fan of for Asia? I'm a fan of for Asia. So this is a project that has almost a thousand stars, and I will give it another star. And then if I remove this star, I can give them one star again, and I can remove it, and I can give them one star again. And in this way, I can just create a series of events of that just gives them a lot of stars when I'm just counting them like this. So instead of doing an eight count, I can just look instead at how many different people have stars these projects. So distinct actor logging, and now we are going to order by that column instead. Um, and let's look at the real number of stars that this project got. Um, you will notice that some projects are more inflated than others. And again, we're querying one whole year of data. It's taking 15 seconds to process all of this data. And yes, you can find out, see that FreeCodeCamp didn't get 90,000 stars, it got 85,000. There are like 5,000 duplicated stars. Some projects have more duplicated stars than others. We can call them fake stars if you want, but that is happening. And when you're running rankings, uh, take care of projects that might be faking their number of stars for any reason. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me go back to the slides because, uh, yeah, so these were the top projects on 2016. 2016, Freecode Camp got double the number of stars because they w had this, the, the number of stars. Now we can do the. Uh, so this is how the rankings changed from 2016 to 2017. TensorFlow went from the number five position to the number two. 
Um, as I was telling you, not all stars are equal. A star that I give a project is different than a star that you give to a project, that you give to a project, because everyone has a different background. Every star comes from a different individual with a different experience, with different interests. Some people are interested in machine learning, some people are interested in PHP, some people are interested in living in Singapore, and each star has all of that background. And we can start querying that kind of data. Um, where do I have a cool query? Yeah. So for example, let's compare, um, let's compare TensorFlow with FreeCodeCamp. They both got a lot of stars. In this case, I'm comparing um, the number of stars they got in 2016. And I'm looking at different dimensions here. Uh, for example, the age of the users starting this project. I don't know the age of people on GitHub, but I know how long they've been around GitHub. Did they create their accounts five years ago or one year ago? It turns out the age of people that start FreeCodeCamp is one year, while TensorFlow is two years. People who start in TensorFlow have more experience. Uh, they have watched start more repositories, like eight times more repositories. They have written uh, more issues, more comments. They've done more, more pull requests. And this way, you can find that projects have uh, a constitute of different kind of people. If you are crea uh, creating a project for uh, people that are learning how to code, you probably want to get uh, newbies. If you have an advanced project, you have your rank, you will count things in a different way. It all depends on what you are counting. You can define your own rankings. Uh, you can be the number one in any project, uh, in any list that you define. Um, in this case, if we count only the number of use the stars from people that have written more than 20 comments, uh, FreeCodeCamp doesn't have 140,000 40, 40, stars, but almost the same number as TensorFlow. Because in this case, in this ranking, we care only about experienced people. Maybe that's why, what I care about. Uh, if you care about something different, that's up to you to define your ranking. Um, so again, looking at 2016, if we look at users with a lot of comments that have been active on GitHub, uh, the ranking changes. Free code camp is not longer the number one project. Uh, Yarn is. Um, Facebook React is not on the top ten, but Facebook Incubator Create React App is on top. And it, so it all depends on who are our users. I was looking also at the stars for Fosasia. Fosasia has 100, some uh, 200 projects, 211 repositories. I wanted to know what are the top projects for Fosasia. Uh, you can run a query like this. And interestingly enough, you get results that look like this. So many Fosasia projects have around 280 stars. And what's happening here is that we have a lot of Fosasia fans that star every Fosasia project, which is nice, but it makes us harder to know what are the top projects uh, that people are interested in. Now, so it's cool if everyone starts for Asia projects, but we might need to look at things in a different way, and we have the raw data to do so. So, for example, if I look at fans that have starred more than, that star mostly only for Asia projects, and I remove them, uh, I get a completely different ranking and a, a different distribution. This looks more normal. Now, here I'm not looking at fans, I'm looking at general interest on each project. Um, when you get stars, you can also ask, so what else have these people start? So in this case, for example, I'm looking at stars to TensorFlow. What else did they start? They start, uh, add, with a query like this, I can see that start finding another uh, machine learning project. And it works pretty well. Um, now, this is a naive ranking just by counting, but then if I want to do it by probability, uh, I get a different ranking. And I get that, yes, people that start TensorFlow also start Teano, Torch, Cafe, Learn, 
Keras, MXNet. And you can start navigating, creating a graph for any project, where wherever your project is, you can navigate what the uh, people that are starting your projects are starting to. You can do timelines of stars, because some projects get like stars in a very, uh, they get the same number of stars every week, and some other projects just have these huge spikes. Uh, these are the top Apache projects. I created this with Data Studio, our free visualization tool. And I have a whole interactive repository. If we have time later, we can come back here. But for example, here I chose two different Apache projects, uh, Arrow versus Flink. Flink has, gets a stable number of stars each week. M meanwhile, Arrow gets a lot of stars every time Wes McKinney writes a blog post about it. Boom, everyone starts this project. This was in February, uh, one year ago. Then in September, he wrote another blog post. Uh, he has another huge jump. So if you want to get stars, if you want to get attention to your projects, uh, there are things that you can do, like, for example, uh, putting your project on Hacker News. Because uh, let's look at these projects, all the spikes they got in the number of stars. Um, if you see those annotations, those annotations show when these projects were shown on the Hacker News front page. And there's a huge correlation. If you show up on Hacker News, people will give you a lot of stars. And what's super interesting here is that I didn't run these annotations manually. But because uh, on BigQuery, I not only have uh, GitHub data, I also have, for example, all of the Hacker News story. And so you, every day we update that data set, and you can run a join between both data sets and just start looking for things that show up on Hacker News and count the number of stars it produces. Um, now, the number of stars is not the only important metric. Uh, we can game stars, we can, but for example, we may want to see a project, the health of projects. Um, what are the projects that have the most comment on issues in this month, June 2016? Kubernetes had a huge amount of comments, 17,000. Spark had a lot of comments. Uh, OpenShift, too. And a project called Sauron Demo. Anyone knows that project? No. So again, whenever we run a query, whenever we get results, we have to be a little suspicious of these results. And it turns out, uh, Sauron Demo, mo these almost 5,000 comments were written by one account. Of course, they are allowed to. You can have robots writing comments. So you might want to uh, take away that kind of stuff. Um, in this case, this ranking is counting not only the number of people writing comments, the authors. Uh, so we have the number of comments. We have the number of people writing comments. And then I'm calculating how many comments each author wrote. And you can see that for Kubernetes, each author wrote about 18 comments. 500 people writing 18 comments each. That shows you that you have a super healthy community. While the project found awesome, yeah, had more people writing comments. But each one left less than two comments each. So in average. So yeah, uh, be suspicious of the results you get. And you can see here that even those projects can get the same number of comments, there is a different measure of healthiness. Um, for Seisha projects, uh, I, I did the same query. Uh, removing the comments that look too similar. And these are the top projects for Fosasia, Open Event Android, SUSI Server, SUSI Android. And you see that there's a healthy number of people commenting, and there is a different rate of comments per project. And as a project maintainer, that's super interesting data. As a project chooser, it's interesting data too. You can do text analysis too. Um, so for example, how do people start issues on GitHub? What's the most common way to start an issue if you want to request something? Are people nice? Are, not, uh, are they not nice? These are the results I got for the first four words when someone starts an issue. They start in a nice way. Like, it would be nice. Is it possible to? I'm trying to. Yeah, people are really nice. Uh, there's a lot of people that start issues in this way. 
but what's most interesting here is the third column that asks how many of these issues get closure. And it turns out if you start an issue with it would be nice, you get a 56% closure. While is it possible to, which is more concrete, get 73% of closure. Now, the best one I got here is when you start an issue saying, I get the following. Like being concrete, showing what's your problem, showing what you want, gets you much better results than just being uh, more ethereal. You can look at countries. Uh, where are people coming from? Um, and if, if you have a guess of the top countries, these are the top countries. The first one is null because most people don't put their location on their profile. But then you have the United States, India, China, Great Britain, the Deutschland, which it might be interesting. Uh, this is the same by number of pushes around the world. And of course, the most concentration is in US, USA, China. But it's more interesting if we look at results per capita. And now we see a huge concentration on North Europe. We see a huge concentration in Australia. Uh, these are the numbers I got. The top countries by, by concentration of programmers are Iceland, Sweden, Norway, New Zealand, Denmark. Uh, basically, cold countries. <laughs> uh, or, or that's what I think when I see those names. Now, I, instead of stopping here and thinking about cold countries, I can go and run an analysis over it. Uh, I can find out where do coders prefer to live. Um, and in BigQuery, I also have the worldwide weather, day by day, station by station. You can get this data, and you, this is my, the average temperature for each station around the world, group by country. And Singapore is one of the hottest countries. Uh, it, I, I can confirm that. Uh, here are the coldest countries on this side. We can join both data sets, and we can get a chart like this. This chart, we can see that, the, yes, the coldest countries have the highest concentration of programmers. There is a correlation. Now, within the hottest countries, that star on the right top, that, that one on the right top, that's Singapore. Yes. Exactly. People don't want to go outside. <laughs> So uh, there's a huge concentration of programmers here. And somehow in Asia, you have the opposite correlation, where the hottest countries have the, the biggest concentration of coders. Uh, counting developers, there are many ways to count them, again. Um, lo looking at them per country in Asia, you can see that, of course, the country with the most users is China, followed by India, Japan, Indonesia. This is by GitHub. Now, each country behaves in a different way. Uh, China gives a lot more stars per user than India. 34 stars per user versus 10. And Singapore is there, number nine. You give in average 17 stars to project. You could do more. Um, and then I have other data sets in BigQuery. I have Stack Overflow. So uh, what are the top countries in Stack Overflow? Is it the same ranking or different? Well, India is the top one followed by Pakistan. Somehow Pakistan uses a lot of stack overflows, producing answers, producing questions. China, and then here Singapore goes down to, uh, to number 11. You could use more stack overflow, you could produce more content, you could ask questions, answer them, and these numbers could go up. Uh, still, you can look at the growth, in this case for stack overflow, how many more users you're getting per, per year, uh, I'm really surprised here about Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. They had a huge growth on the number of people participating in Stack Overflow. Singapore had a 45% instead. Yes? Replication distribution? Oh, I would love to do that. OK, that's my homework. Oh, you can help me. Anyone can run queries here. It will be really interesting to see which countries produces the most useful answers. Stay tuned. Yes, so I, oh, we also have all of the Stack Over, no, no, all of the GitHub code, the open source projects. We have a copy in BigQuery so you can uh, analyze code. We anal uh, released this two years ago. Uh, when I took this screenshot, the table was 
almost two terabytes. Now it's over two terabytes, more than 200 million unique files. It's a table that has the content of each file, the size. Each file, unique file is only shown here once. Uh, so we are deduplicating it. You want to get the total number of bytes. You can multiply the size by the number of copies, and you get that we have more than 46 terabytes of code in this table. And then remember some rules before querying this table. It's really important that just don't go and query this table. Extract the data that you want to extract first. Because everyone has a free terabyte of analysis every month, and querying a two terabyte table will take away your free terabyte pretty fast. But I have left for you a table with all of the Java code, all of the Python code, and if you want to extract anything special, you can also ask my help, and I will leave that table publicly for you. Uh, I also left a sample table that's way smaller. And remember, we only get open source projects according to the license they have. If we cannot determine that the license is open source, we don't copy it. Um, and now you can start looking at the real code. You can run regular expressions. You can see, for example, this where the top imports, the top rows in imports in Java land between these years. People are doing way more injects now. People are using more Mojito, etc. And then you can start looking at things like, oh, are people linking to Stack Overflow within the code? With a query like this, I'm looking for regular expression, anything that looks like a link to Stack Overflow, I can join it with my Stack Overflow data set. Uh, for example, in JavaScript code, these are the top linked questions. Right? Is there a reg escape function in JavaScript? Um, I'm, I also have the number of views that these questions are getting. Um, one of the questions with the top number of views is how to create a new UID in JavaScript. Have, uh, it's linked from 600 files on GitHub, has 600,000 views on Stack Overflow. Same with Python. Um, this is how I extracted all of the Python code, anything that ends with .py or a Python notebooks, a gigabytes of Python code, a gigabytes of I Python notebooks, and this is how you search for the top imports within Python. Just look at the lines that start this way and extract what's there. And top style references, tag overflow questions from Python code, pa pa pa. And then you can look at the opposite question, as uh, Sebastian did here. How many people are copying code from Stack Overflow into GitHub? Anyone here? Anyone want to admit it? So Sebastian was asking that question, and he found one of the most popular answers, how to convert byte size into human readable code format in Java. That's the top answer. And then if you want to look for this, it's not that easy, because people change the name of the variables, the indentation. So he transformed this answer into a regular expression. And with BigQuery, you can search for regular expressions. Uh, you can do it in a finite time. And he found at least 400 files that matched this answer. And only 27% gave credits. And they all looked like a copy of the Stack Overflow answer. So please, when you copy code from Stack Overflow, credit it. Or Sebastian will find you. OK. And how do you request features using data? Um, someone wanted in Go, wanted instead of writing, having to write after expiration time, sub time now, they wanted to write after time until. It's nicer, but they didn't add any data. So my teammate at that time, Francesc, that's still working in Go, but not with me, but with you, uh, he moved to a different company. Uh, but he still does this kind of analysis. He looked for all the projects that would benefit from this. And he found at least 2,000 repositories that would benefit from this change. And the GoLang team implemented this feature. Uh, someone else was asking also to, to rename HTTLS config to make it standardize it between two different uh, modules. And Francesc found that 700 repositories would break if they normalize this, so they didn't. And the important message here for you is that if you put your code on GitHub, if you open source your code, 
uh, you can, your vote can, your code counts as votes because people can, you don't need to do anything, just put your code there and people that are interested in analyzing it will find it and will implement features that are more, the most useful for you just and you don't need to do anything else other than open source. You can go beyond regular expressions, you can do uh, user-defined functions in JavaScript, so for example, to do static code analysis, I downloaded a JavaScript library from GitHub called JSHint, and now I can run it inside a query, and I just import the JavaScript library and things run. Some people are also running arbitrary C code inside BigQuery because you can compile C code to WebAssembly, and I have some people here that are doing exactly that. Uh, and yes, yeah, you can run that kind of thing, and this is a static code analysis of JavaScript code, what are the top warnings? I have two minutes left, so I will hurry up. Uh, spaces versus tabs, spaces, tabs, uh, these were the rules, how I analyze this, everyone wanted to know what's more popular, and spaces are way more popular, except in Go. If you like Go there, if you like tabs, you can go to Go, and that's where people just put tabs. Um, people have used this repository to fix uh, vulnerabilities. There was a team of 50 Googlers that went all around GitHub fixing the Mad Gadget vulnerability. It was pretty cool. Um, I love putting, when you write, also when you put your commas in SQL, would you rather put them at the end of the line or at the start of the line? Anyone likes them at the start of the line? I like it at the start of the line. I know it's ugly, but I wanted to demonstrate to everyone that it was better, but it turns out, yes, way more people put them at the end. But then the question is, which projects are more successful? And how do you measure success? Stars, stars of the year, number of contributors, activity. And it turns out that projects, with a query like this, you can look at projects that allow you to put a comma at the start, as I like them. Those projects are double as successful as the other projects. Um, so I guess I win until someone else proves that I ran the wrong query. And you can go and find me because all the raw data is uh, in Airbus here. So please, challenge these results. Uh, just go deep, find the things you want to find, tell me where I'm wrong, and show up, change these results. Uh, you can be more active on GitHub, you can be more active on Stack Overflow, tweet about what you're doing, blog, blog. Uh, people are measuring and looking at what you're doing. So who wants to analyze GitHub? Uh, even GitHub does it uh, with BigQuery. I have a video with Alison, one of the data scientists at GitHub, uh, and I hope you get pretty interested in doing this. There's way more. I don't have time to talk about all of these blog posts in the last 40 seconds, but uh, you can go deeper, you can publish. I'll be very happy to see it. We have also, uh, other than our $300, we have the startup program for, with more than $3,000 credits. Uh, talk to us about it. And yes, you can find me on GitHub, you can find me on Reddit, on Stack Overflow, and you can give me feedback because I love feedback, so please uh, leave it there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone has a question in 10 seconds? Nine, eight, <laughs> uh, nine.